You don't need to be a scientist to understand that the climate crisis is not just about melting icebergs and planting trees anymore. Food and water shortages are growing. People are fleeing areas that can no longer sustain them. Climate change is affecting us all, but not equally. The emissions of the world's richest 10% are equal to the emissions of the rest of the world combined, and those who've done the least to cause climate breakdown are suffering the worst of its effects. Since the 1970s, of all the deaths from weather-related disasters, over 90% occurred in developing economies. And the situation for the global south will only get worse as the planet gets hotter. Since the 1980s, scientists have been ringing the climate change alarm bell. Climate negotiations have been held annually. World leaders and company CEOs make pledges and promise to do more. Yet not a single high-income country is reducing emissions fast enough to effectively protect the planet often delayed by the deceptive tactics used by fossil fuel companies. While millions of people are suffering injustices and inequalities are widening. The concept of climate justice was brought into the global stage by activists in 2000. It was a pivotal moment for how the climate change movement progressed. What do we want? When do we want it? Now demands for climate justice are heard at protests around the world, including here in Bangladesh, where it's predicted that by 2050, rising sea levels will submerge 70% of the nation's land and displace over 20 million people. So what does climate justice mean and how did we get here in the first place? The pursuit of grossly unequal and carbon-intensive economic growth by governments goes back centuries. North American, European and other industrialized economies built oppressive systems of colonialism such as slavery and apartheid, where the extraction of resources at the expense of people of color, indigenous peoples and the environment was fueled by the Industrial Revolution. This led to rapid movements in living standards in Europe and settler colonies. But in many other parts of the world, people paid a terrible price of mass-scale colonial violence and oppressions. Never mind the vast amount of fossil fuels extracted, centuries of deforestation has left land extra vulnerable to climate disasters. And this economic model is still prevalent today, driving global inequality and climate change. A study found that in 2015 alone, the North appropriated from the South 12 billion tons of raw material, 822 million hectares of land that's twice the size of India, 21 extrajoules of energy that's three times the annual energy consumption of the United Kingdom, and 392 billion hours of labor, all worth. 10.8 trillion US dollars, enough to end extreme poverty many times over. But it's not only about racial injustice and the oppression of indigenous people and their land. There's more. People experiencing forms of oppression like sexism, homophobia and poverty anywhere are impacted more by climate change. For example, after Fiji was hit by the strongest ever recorded cyclone in the Southern Hemisphere, this LGBT community were excluded from disaster response plans and also blamed for the natural disaster. Climate justice is about recognizing the interconnectedness of these struggles. Genuine solutions to the climate crisis means that accelerating the reduction in emissions, of course, but also that we work together to create a sustainable, fairer and more equal world in the process. This means that while we phase out fossil fuels and transition to other sources of energy, Governments must protect the livelihoods and rights of workers and communities, essentially redesigning the global economy to incorporate human rights principles. But so far, during climate negotiations, wealthier governments are only willing to discuss small steps to reduce emissions. Justice is not on their agenda. Recently, some governments made a symbolic gesture to pay millions to enable the most vulnerable countries to cope with the harm and damages associated with climate change, known as loss and damage. But other wealthy countries fear loss and damage might pave the way for court actions by countries in the global south to obtain damages and historical interests going back centuries. If governments in the global north are prepared to face up to the hard truths of their historical, moral and legal responsibilities, then climate justice and positive change is possible for us all.